Hello, and thank you for stopping by. Today, I'm going to show you the steps I take to put a new keypad in this Lenovo iPad model 330-15KB. I'm going to show you how I go about it, the tools that I use, the mistakes I may make as I go along. This is an area totally out of my comfort zone. Never worked on a computer before. I watched one or two videos just to see what I was going to get into. And now I'm going to give it a shot. I'm also going to show you how I got information out of this laptop while the keyboard wasn't working. This was sprayed by a garden hose and I gave it a week to dry out. I had fans on it. I used the rice method. I had a can of decadent. Tried everything. Nothing dried it out. Also, I come to find out using a hair dryer is not the way to go. It could cause static electricity in there. For those of you that work on electronics, you already noticed for the newbies like myself, it was an experience. Let me show you the problem I have with this laptop and what I did to get the information out. Now I was fortunate that the laptop does come on. You see the screen powered up, but this is what happens. I haven't touched anything, but when you go to put in the password to sign in, this happens all by itself. Now, the iPad isn't working, although yesterday I was able to move this cursor around with the iPad. Now it's not working. I normally use a mouse anyway. I just have trouble using the iPad to begin with. But it was working yesterday, and now it's not. Late yesterday afternoon, the new keypad came in. So we're going to attempt this repair today. Now when I click it on to um, sign in, it tells me that my uh, password is incorrect. Okay, so I hit OK, and this just happens again. The steps I took so I could get information out of here, because I went a week without a computer, and I couldn't order parts. This is the only computer I have. I couldn't order parts for my lawnmower repairs. I couldn't do anything. The first mistake I made was taking this back piece off that goes back here. No need to take this off. Mistake number one. So now, just close this up, flip this over. This was already done. So I'm just showing the steps that I took. You have these screws in the back that you have to take out. They're a Phillips screwdriver. Nothing difficult about that at all. Once they're out, you have to split open this case. Now, I didn't want to use a screwdriver, anything that's going to mar it up. So what I did, I had a one gallon milk jug. I cut the plastic out. And that was thin enough for me to get in here and split it open all the way around. Once that was done, I was able to, you're going to hear popping as you go. Okay. Got to get this out again. And when you pull this off, I found out that you, you open it up from the front, but you push it to the back to get it off. And this is what we find inside. Here's where the fun begins. Now, this be a good time to clean up the fan, blow some dust out. I looked at it this way. This wasn't working, and what did I have to lose? Oh, I do have a CD-ROM on this one. If you have this model, you'll have the CD-ROM. This just slides right out. I slid this out before I opened it up, and I used that piece of plastic, and it came right out, no difficulty at all. Now let me show you what I did to get the information that I needed out. This ribbon or cable, as I mentioned, this is an area out of my uh, comfort zone, so I'm not going to have the right terminology, but this ribbon goes to the keypad. You open this up, that little clip that's over there, you can do it with your fingernail, and you pull this out. With that out, flip it back over. And again, I've done this a couple of times. I try not to use this computer much while it was in this state. It's not to break that little clip that opens and closes all the time. You'll notice the power button light isn't on. Gonna plug in that mouse again. Now the keypad mouse is working, but I'm still gonna use the wired mouse. That's my preference. Now that this is clear, I have a remote keyboard. 
with a USB cable. And you might be able to use a wireless one. Once that's plugged in, this keyboard is functional. Where this one's where the original one's disconnected. So now I can sign in, and there we go. I have full access. Now the problem with doing this, if you didn't want to fix this, is that to shut the computer down isn't a problem, but to turn it back on, it won't. This power switch isn't connected. So without that power switch connected, you have to flip the computer over again, plug in that ribbon, cable, whatever you want to call it, turn it on, pull it out, and do this over. If this would just work like this, I probably wouldn't go to the effort of changing this keyboard. From what I've seen on the video, it's a pretty tedious task, but for what they want for a new computer like this, which... I can't even get one like this. This has a terabyte in it. It has the hard drive, two ports on the side. It's almost double the price of what I paid for this one just a couple of years back. So now I'm going to flip this back over. Let me shut this. Let me shut this down. Not sure what I was going to need. This, this is the assembly of tools I put together. I have this razor blade, a couple of box cutters. So this is a straight edge from a utility knife. This is a toothbrush that I ground all the way down on both ends to use as a prying tool. This is out of my wife's uh, kit, so I might need this to pry and push, I'm not sure. Small pair of needle nose pliers. The Phillips screwdriver that I use to take the screw out. And this is a knife that I made using the um, Sawzall blade. I sharpened this set. This is really sharp. It's razor sharp. And for a back, I used the cork from a wine bottle, put a slit in it, pressed it in, taped it in so I could cut. Not sure what I'm going to use, if this is going to be enough, whatever the case may be, when I have these tweezers. This is how I'm going to start. So now, the first thing, according to the video that I watched, was to remove the battery. And that makes sense because you don't want to short anything out and cause damage that's not already done. The previous heat wave we had, we caught a break in between. We had some warm weather outside. I had my computer outside, and when I walked away from it, I came back to find my grandson's frantically drying the um, computer. Well, what happened, they were using the garden hose and... Grandpa, it was only a mist of water that was on there. Well, I guess a mist is open to interpretation. And the rest is history. So I'm taking these screws out. Now, I have a couple of pill bottles because I don't know if these screws are all the same size. And if I notice a difference in the size of these screws, I'm going to put them in the pill bottle. The screws I took, pulled off the back before shooting this video are already in a pill bottle. That was done about a week ago, and if you're anything like me, you know how it is to lose these things. Now, it looks like there should have been a screw in here. Right here. I don't see it. There's one there. How many did I pull out? One, two. Okay. I got those screws out. Now, here's the connection for the battery. I don't know if they, it looks like there might be another connection over here for the hard drive possible I'm gonna leave the hard drive in I want to take out as little as possible I don't know what this is over here whatever this doesn't look like it belongs this might have been for me uh, picking this up and putting it down okay let's get this battery out of here I would assume there's some compat, some kind of, oh, there's another screw right back here. That's that one. I would assume there was some kind of capacitors in here. So I pulled this battery out. I'm going to wait a few minutes while I'm looking everything over just to see how I'm going to proceed. So you lift the battery out. It's holding some, something's holding me down here. Oh no, it's just this wire. 
Okay, let me see here close. I don't know if that has one of those tabs also. It must. Okay, this battery isn't pulling out. Alright, this battery was kind of tough getting out. I was worried about breaking something. I'm looking for tabs that I could squeeze. I didn't see anything, so I just used a screwdriver and carefully pried, 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 and then just pushed. I had to push it pretty hard though to get it out. Anyway, it's done. We'll put this off to the side. Now what's next? I know the keyboard is under here and all of this has to come out. This comes out as one piece. I believe this stays connected. All these little tabs have to be removed and these cables have to be pulled out. So I'm going to go about doing that right now. I don't know if this comes out. This looks like it might have to come out also. This is the piece. What was here? Oh, this is where the CD-ROM slid in and this was the connection for the CD-ROM. This screw looks like it might go to the bottom, so I'm going to take it out. Whether it's necessary or not, I'm not sure. I'll lift this little tear, pull that ribbon out. This one's already out. I know the fan has to come out. Not sure about the uh, heat sink over here. Let's see what we got here. Make a different view of this. I know these hinges, the screws on these hinges are going to have to come out. There's one, two, same on the other side. You have this wire here. Get this fan, it's wrapped around the fan. Here's the screw for the fan. Let's get this fan out. This looks like the easiest one to get out so far. this fan out I'll be blowing out to look at that dust this computer gets used quite a bit all my videos get done with this computer yeah these all look like the same size but you know what these all look like the same size well, we'll put all the battery screws there the fan screw there let's see what we have okay what do we have here now okay we have it where it's connected over here, that looks like the power for the fan. I should pull out. I'm gonna take a closer look at that. And this wire gets wrapped around. Okay, I'm looking at the configuration of this wire now. Not sure what this is for, but I know when we put it back, we have to leave some slack because that this is where the hinges where it opens and closes. I'm gonna be taking this out, pulling all these out, removing whatever screws are here, pulling everything up. When I'm done with that, I'll be back. Now, for the sake of not making this video longer than it has to be, I did a lot of this off camera. When you go to take this off, there are two screws over here where the power plug would go in. And these screws are smaller in size than the other. Plus there's silver color. Right over here, there was a tag that said uh, Lenovo. There's a screw under there that you got to get off. And this over here, I'm not sure what this does. Maybe it's uh, some kind of uh, heat fuse. I've seen things like this on um, electric motors. When they get too hot, they shut the motor down. I'm not sure if that's what this is. Again, these tabs, you have to lift that little lip under here, pull them out. This cable and this cable were stuck onto here. They were glued on. So you have to pull them up and give it a little force. There's this connector over here you have to get out. And that's about it. Now the video I watched, these hinges popped up. But this one here doesn't look like it pops up. So here's the motherboard. We'll take that out. And this is what we're looking at. I don't know if this is a piece of plastic on here. 
feels like there's a piece of plastic on here. Now, from what I've seen, this isn't screwed on, it's pressed on. That's the reason for this knife and the razor blades. All of these have to be cut off. So I'm going to start on the outside, and I'm going to lift this up. It's important that you don't bend this part. This metal plate will be used again. You don't get a new one with a new keyboard. So this has to be saved. You don't want to bend it up. So I'll be cutting these off all along here, the edges. I'll be popping it up. And I don't know if it doesn't look like there's anything in the middle here. But there is plastic on this. I don't know what this plastic does. But it must be there for a reason. If I don't have to remove this plastic, it's staying. If I have to remove it, I'll take it off and then just put it back on. And I put the new keyboard on. Oh, this tab over here. Okay. This is probably some... Uh, I don't know what this is for. But I'm going to leave it alone. So I'm going to cut these off. This is going to be a little tedious. So I'll do this off camera. And all I'm going to do is go along... And if you can see it on camera here, I'll be cutting these plastic pieces out. Like that. Like that. And all the way across until I can lift this up. Once that's done, I'll be back. All right, I've got it off. Let me tell you, this is very time consuming. Take your time. You want to be careful when you cut cutting along the edges that you don't cut into the wire. I remove the monitor and those hinges do pop up so this is what it looks like when you get it off and right around here you want to be careful while you cutting these off you don't want to cut into any of this but it's over here and as you're pulling this up you'll hear it pop 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 because unless you're cutting it really flush in a lot of these locations you're not getting all of the plastic off so what happens, a little bit still there, and you have to pry it up. And I got it off without bending it up too much. It looks pretty good there. And here's the keyboard. Now this is interesting here. Let's see. This has this tab over here. I'm looking at this because the new keypad has this on it too, and I wasn't sure what to do. Now, same thing's going to have to be done over here. All of these are going to have to be cut so you can remove this keypad. I'm looking to see where the damage was. Looks like, oh, that's the plastic from above. Looks like it's still wet. It's been about two, three weeks now, <laughs> and it's still got moisture over here. I guess you won't see what the damage was. I don't know why this keyboard wasn't working, but it wasn't working. So I'm going to follow the same process all around here. I'm going to pop this off. Plus, when you're taking this up, you want to be careful when you're prying it, because you don't want to crack the plastic that's on the other side. And I'll be cleaning all this up before I put the new one on. Oh, there we go. Put it on this way. If I work on something and have to put it down, I generally check my videos to see where the parts go. If you decide to do this yourself, I would take a I would take video of the disassembly so you know how to put it back. Some of this looked a little different than what I saw in the video that I was watching, at least from what I remember. This over here now is interesting, this piece right here. All right, let me get this off, and uh, I'll show you what I'm going to do to get this back on. I'm going to have to go get a soldering iron also. All right, I'm back, and I had this keyboard removed. Uh, I don't see where any damage was on this. These marks, these indentations you see that's from when i had the screwdriver and i was prying it out the only thing i could figure is that maybe over here it looks like there was still some moisture when you turn it on the ones kept popping up well that's neither here or there now the new keyboard came in a box like this just like this there's the number made in china Got it from Amazon, Amazon Prime. It was delivered in one day. So that came fairly quick. The delivery part was no problem. Let's see how she works. And here's the old one. 
here's the new one. New one is a lighter color than the old one. The old one is a darker gray compared to this lighter gray. And the new one has these, and the new one has a silver color where the connection is, where the old one was black. This one shows better. Now, what I'm not sure on, here's the old one. Here's the new one when you turn it to the back side. Get them the same way. The new one has this 3M tag over here. And it has this tag over here. Where the old one has this tag right here. And you see how this is folded over? Now, this says adhesive on it. This doesn't say adhesive, but I'm assuming it's for the adhesive. Maybe it's supposed to stick, stay down. This looks like it has to fold over. Because over here on this one, it's folded over on the edge. The camera could pick that up. And I'm not quite sure why this adhesive is on over here. This one was just in like this, and this is, came through and folded up like that. Anyway, I'm going to fold this over and stick it onto here. And I just want to show you something. Look at this fan. Look at the dirt that's inside that fan. That is something else. As I mentioned, I use this laptop a lot. When I have it on my lap, I use this uh, lap board, if you want to call it just to keep the uh, dust from the clothing from going in there. And even with that, I still have all this dust. So what I'm gonna do next is to place this keyboard down. And this is where all these tabs over here is what was holding this keyboard down. So if any of them are a little proud, I'm just gonna hit it with a soldering iron, melt it down real quick. And any of them where there isn't any plastic sticking up, I'm going to use this plastic right here. This is off a coffee container, Maxwell House. This should hold it down. If this doesn't look like it's melting right, I'll just use a different plastic. I'm not going to show this as I'm doing it. This video's getting quite long. I'm running out of memory. And what I'll be doing is I'll be placing this down. I'll be pressing it down where... Plastic is sticking out. I just touch it, melt that plastic. Where it looks like it needs a little plastic, I'll hit it like this, just as if I was soldering, but with plastic. I'll be holding it down with my finger, and I'll be going along. I think I'm going to start on the edge and work my way down this edge, then maybe this edge, then the middle, up to that edge there. I'll turn it over from time to time, make sure everything's looking good on the other side. And once that's done, I'll put the metal plate back on. And I'll have to do the same thing with the metal plate where this was connected on the outside. I won't be videoing me tacking this back on or the plate. But once I have this on and the plate, I'll be back to show you the next steps. I have the keyboard uh, plastic soldered into the bottom and this metal plate on top. I tried using uh, the plastic from the coffee cans. That wasn't working right. I tried plastic from a juice bottle. That didn't work. Milk container didn't work. Um, it's just when you when you heated it up and you rubbed it, it would just come right off. What I ended up using was two keys from the keyboard itself. I used the uh, shift key and uh, uh, whatever that key was up on top over here. I, f I tried different ways of doing it. This would have been a tedious video to watch if I was showing you what I was doing there. I was trying to hold it and uh, heat it up with the soldering gun like you would when you solder wire. It wasn't working. I found the best way to do it was to cut a small piece, small as you cut it down, pick it up with the tweezer, hold it over the hole, melt it down a little bit. Once it got soft, push it in with a screwdriver, Stick the tip of the soldering gun inside the hole, pull it out, push it down with the screwdriver, the flat part of the screwdriver, let it cool a second and move on to the next one. And that seemed to work a lot better. So I didn't get every one of these, got these on the end. But 
when you screw down into this, there's a couple of screws like this one here, this one here, and a couple others that go right into the back plastic. So I don't believe this will be a problem. If it is, I'll just have to open it up and tack up a little bit more. Now I have to get the motherboard back in, the uh, fan, which I cleaned out, reroute the wires, put the, uh, put the monitor back on, and plug everything in. Once I have this all connected, I'll be back. I'm running out of memory on the camera to video all this, plus me doing it, and as slow as I'll be doing it, it'd be painstaking to watch. So then I'll finish the assembly, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. I have it all together. One of the connections uh, underneath this battery, if you're doing this, don't forget to put that connection together. I have this back over here, whatever this is. I have these wires routed. I have the fan connected, fans cleaned out, the hinges are on, battery's in, battery only has three screws holding it in, everything looks okay, I'm going to put the um, back plate on, which I was missing two or three screws to begin with, when I took this off, they fell out over the course of time, so I'm going to get this together, Flip it on and see how she works. Okay, it's together. Let's see now. Yeah, John, hit the switch. Well, the on button works. Screen's on. There we go. All right, so it's on. Wait, wait, let's see. You got to give it a chance. I have a lot stored on this computer, so it takes a while for it to load up. Ooh, hit enter. Here's the test. Hmm? All right. We're not getting the ones coming across. Let me type in my uh, password and see if it's working. Hold that, John. Hold it like that. Got it? Yeah. Don't have a shake. Just like that. Got it. Okay. All right. So far, it's a success. It works. Let's see here. Even the cursor is working. I don't have the external mouse on it. As far as the look, it looks the same as the other one. I believe these keys look like they're a little further down. The other keys, I believe, it was just slightly higher, if anything. Uh, you really can't tell, John. No. Can I play with this? Can I play with this? Like, type. There you go. The Wi-Fi is working. It. And let me check all the keys, see if all the keys are working. Number lock on and off. We're good. Okay, I just put up, pulled up WordPress. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. All the numbers on top are working. The number pad's working. All the other keys are working. So far. Shift key is working. Control. Let's see this over here. Control Alt. Control Alt Delete. That's also working. All right. As far as I can tell, all the keys are working. Thumbs up on this one. Again, this is the first time I ventured into this. Definitely out of my comfort zone. If your computer's down and it looks hopeless, you might want to give it a shot. The keypad, I believe, cost me $15 or $18. I don't remember now. It's on Amazon. I'll post the link down below where you can pick up this keypad. And be specific on the keypad. I, I sent emails to a couple of the sellers because they looked like they were the same. I had one that looked identical to this with the exception of this on and off switch. It was in a different location. They had the model number of this computer on their site but when I emailed them they said that it wouldn't work so you want to be specific on ordering it you want to make sure it looks the same email the outfit that you're buying it from just to make sure and not only that if it's the wrong keypad and they told you it was the right one it's easier to get a refund but that's a wrap if you found this video useful let me know by giving it a thumbs up it does help and if you would post a comment down below good bad or indifferent it does help with the channel and be sure to hit that bell icon not to miss my new videos as I upload them. 
Until next time, stay safe.